Well, hello and a very warm welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take our outside broadcast unit <laughs> to friend Sean's house. Uh, Sean has a, an R1250 GS exclusive and actually we bought our bikes on exactly the same day, 2nd of November 2018. In fact, from different dealers, but, but certainly on the same day. Now, those of you that follow the channel, subscribe to the channel and watch the channel, you'll realise that I've fitted quite a number of accessories to my R1250 GS and I've realistically, whilst none of it has been BMW original accessories, the bulk of them have been from what probably would be classed as the prime aftermarket, the premium aftermarket product. So for example, the machine art mudsling and fender extender, the Wunderlich engine bars, the Denali lights and CanSmart unit, all of which are not inexpensive, uh, but certainly would be classed as the, the top notch of aftermarket accessories, I suspect, for the machine. However, we are of course aware that there are um, other items available on marketplaces on the internet, similar such as eBay or, or, or Amazon. And friend Sean, who has no financial need necessarily to fit this type of accessory, decided that he would buy a bundle of accessories, common accessories, to fit to his R1250 GS. And I thought it would be a good thing to show them on the channel how they fit, how they stack up and how they compare. And as we go through and fit these, we'll put some comparison prices between what might be classed as the premium brand of aftermarket accessory and what Sean actually paid from eBay. And the links to the eBay items will be down below as well. And certainly some of the accessory videos that I've made will be referenced by cards at the top of the screen. But I think what we'll try and show here is that although Sean didn't buy the cheapest that was available on eBay, he always went up one price notch. Um, we'll hopefully be able to show that some of these products are perfectly adequate for the job for which they're intended. So over the next minutes of the video, we will be fitting uh, a pair of LED lights. We will be fitting handlebar risers, 40 millimeter up and back handlebar risers. We'll be fitting a Perspex headlight protector, uh, a equivalent of the machine art fender extender for the front fender. And rather than an equivalent mud sling at the back, Sean's opted to have a rear wheel hugger. So we'll be fitting a, a hugger to that. I guess comparisons there would probably be the Puig hugger for the R1250 GS. And then lastly, a rubber bung set to fill the voids in the, in the frame that are, again, quite a common accessory. So as I say, as we go through, we'll put the equivalent up, we'll put the prices up so that you can see them for yourself. But... Let's join our outside broadcast unit in Sean's garage. Okay, so as said, we're out on an outside broadcast. This is my old buddy, Sean. Hi. Um, Sean, as I say, has this wonderful beast behind us, the R1250 GS exclusive. So exactly the same bike as mine, but a little more bling, as we always say to Sean. We also call Sean Thirsty Sean. That's mainly because mainly he drinks an awful lot and doesn't get hangovers, which is really, really, really annoying. Um, but it's his bike that he's happily loaning us today to fit these eBay parts. So um, say hello, Sean. Morning. Afternoon. Afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> so, um, so we'll make a start with it. The first thing we're going to fit is going to be the headlight lens, and then we'll work our way backwards on the bike until we've finished it off. So see you in a moment. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is to fit the acetate cover Sean's got here for the, for the light. So it's going to fit over here. Very simple fitment. Four screws here, and the Perspex piece comes with spacers and little cups to do it. So I'm using a Torx 10 uh, bit here they give you with the equipment replacement screws because obviously these little short ones now aren't going to reach i'll pass that to my glamorous assistant okay so what we have now is is obviously the unit will cover it here we have extra long screws with almost like a number plate in fact it probably is a number plate cover for the screw and then a, a spacer like so so these spacers are going to sit behind with the grill sitting off it so if we put this one here in the first in the top corner unfortunately and this is my biggest bugbear with aftermarket products don't matter when you get them from not cheap aftermarket products any of them is they all use different screws of course we've used torx 10 to take them out of bmw fitment and these are now 
posi or Phillips, which effectively, uh, number one posi, posi which, which effectively means you've now got to carry another screwdriver. Like so. So there. So those are now in just a couple of threads and that'll give us plenty of room then to stick the top ones in. Now, as we've said, these are only just in a few threads so that we can make sure that this will all line up pretty nicely um, and isn't going to isn't going to sit skew if so now we can go ahead that that's all settled in and just just pinch them up they don't need a huge amount they're self tapping screws and really it is just two fingers to tighten like so push the caps down so there we are We've taken the obviously the cover, the, the protective cover off the back and I will leave Sean to do the honours of removing the front cover and exposing his lovely little bit of etched GS1250. <laughs> yeah, it's going to come off in about 500 bits. There you go. Well, at least you can see it from there. And so there we have it, all fitted, looks pretty nice. It's got the nice GS1250 on it as a little bit of, a, of an extra bit for an exclusive bike. On to the next piece. Okay, so next fitment is gonna be the fender extender. And I've gotta say, this particular unit here looks exactly the same as the one that I fitted on my bike. And I'll reference that on a card up in the top of the, top of the screen now so that you can look at the difference. But quite frankly, it's a, as I said on my video, I think it's a very simple injection molding. So it just literally goes over the top of the mudguard here. And then at the back here, the blade, um, hopefully you can see that just here. So this is the blade of the original mudguard has now shot through this gap in the injection molding. And if I'm honest with you, that would, apart from the fact that it would eventually just drop down, that would normally stay there without any additional fixings. But again, we have these grip fixings here, which we're going to fit on the inside of the fender extender. And then this little lug here will grip on the inside of the existing fender, meaning that you don't have to drill any holes. So when you come to sell the bike, you've got no additional holes in the bike. So we'll just move the camera and show you how that's done. So um, I'm not quite sure what that key is. I'm guessing it's probably a four mil or maybe a maybe a three mil. I think it's probably a four mil hex key. Supplied, Again, supplied hex key. with. Supplied with it. Kit. Yeah, so the hex key was even supplied, as Sean has just said there. So quite simply, that goes in like so. And you can't do anything but tighten it against the existing mudguard. And there we go. That is that side fitted. It's going absolutely nowhere now. We'll fit the other side. You've no need to see it. It's just repeat this side. Okay, so next we're going to fit the up and back risers to the handlebars. Now, we're pretty sure, and we'll tell you at the end, that none of this is going to need extending. We think this is all long enough. You can see that we've put a towel here. Obviously, the tank under here is plastic, so it's not likely to dent, but we certainly don't want to scratch it. And I think another thing you should probably be aware of is you're probably best to do this with two people because I think we're going to be surprised just how heavy these handlebars are. I don't think it's a tricky operation, but I think we might find you know that it's that it's actually quite heavy when we come to come to actually fit it. But we're going to remove the four bolts on here. Now you'll notice before we remove them that the front here is right the way down. So when we come to retighten them, we're going to tighten the front first. Please check it in your own manual. It's in the BMW manual under the torque settings, but the handlebar settings on this particular bike taken from Sean's manual a moment ago is 19 Newton meters, 19 Newton meters. But please look up what yours is just in case that changes. But we're gonna tighten up the front ones first and then the rear ones afterwards. We're actually gonna tighten exactly the same torque settings to the unit which will go below because obviously the billeted aluminum is gonna bolt to here and then the handlebars will bolt to the billeted aluminium. So we'll make exactly the same tightening sequences on both of them. It's a Torx 45 fitting on here. And once again, unfortunately, the replacements are 
hex key, but they are stainless steel, so they won't be rusting, which is good. But um, again, it's a little bit of a nuisance because you now have to carry some hex keys as well. But anyway, let's get on with it. We'll speed this up for you so you don't have to go through the pain too much. there we go we've now removed the uh, clamps that hold the handlebars and actually I'm supporting the handlebars here so I'm just about to lift them off so we're just going to bring them backwards very gently and just ease them down so that we're resting on the towel and then we're all good to go we'll now go and get the billeted aluminium parts and we'll fit those in reverse okay so here we are then about to fit these back on now so this unit here is going to sit like this now It'll need tightening to 19 newton meters front and rear, but it doesn't need to be front first or back first because actually it's sitting flat. That's not clamping anything. It's just extending the clamp, if you see what I mean. It's only when we come to clamp the original clamp back on that we need to do this top one, the front one, as was at 19 newton meters to close that up entirely and then tighten this one up afterwards. So we're expecting the back one to sit a little bit proud as you see it now. Now you'll also notice that we have um, supplied with two short screws if you look at it, short bolts sorry if you look at those you'll see that they are a different length now what we've actually looked at is in this new piece of aluminium this hole here is actually machined deeper than this hole here so if I actually put the short one in the back and the long one in the front hopefully you'll see there that they do actually stick out exactly the same length so we're presuming that that in itself is right and will leave us then with four long bolts with which to clamp the top up. We're just going to put a little bit of lubrication onto the bolts before we put them in because we're putting stainless into alley, uh, so, sorry stainless into a casting and then we'll get on with tightening them up. So we'll see you shortly when we've done it. Okay so we've now put these on, um, we've, we've certainly lined the handlebars as best as we can back in their original position although we need to realise that they are you know a few mil back as well so it's going to be a slightly um, different riding position so it might be something we need to adjust later but width wise there's a little width mark on either side between the yokes here we've made sure that we've got that square and we're now going to torque this one and this one both to 19 meters before we do anything with these back ones so these back ones you may see us while we're doing this slacken these back ones off to make sure that they're not in play and then we'll tighten these up to 19 newton meters last so we make sure we've got a clamping effect on the handlebars So we've now tightened the top ones up to 19 newton meters and you can see there's no gap. So that's the important thing there. And then Sean's just tightening those back ones up to 19 newton meters and you'll see in a moment that there is quite a gap there. But if you look at the bike when we started, there was a gap there. Okay, so the next job is to fit the bung set and just to show you where these are going to fit, we've got an angled one here, which is the, we're calling this the large bung. Then we've got a hole here, which we're calling the small bung. So we'll put one in each of those. Now Sean's bike actually has the SW Motec crash bars fitted. So normally there would be a medium sized bung to go in this hole, but his crash bars actually go through that back engine mounting um, fitting and, and completely obviously fill it so we won't actually be using that bone. I don't think he'll be asking for money back. And then the last one is just in here, hopefully you can see that. Um, I suppose it's realistically just behind the radiator um, and that's the front engine mounting here. We'll fit a medium one to that. Now it's exactly the same both sides of the bike so effectively it's two medium ones, front and rear, upper engine mounting holes but we're not going to use the rear uh, engine hole and then the rear frame mounting here the large one and the small one just um, underneath the seat so we'll fit those now and then show you a few of them when they're fitted so a soft mallet fills the hole and then the smaller one just goes to the rear of that one we're on the right hand side of the bike now as 
as you sit on it. Um, and to avoid smacking the seat there and maybe making a lump out of the seat, Sean's just used one hammer on another hammer. So job done on that one, we'll move to the front. And that's it, all done. We'll do the other side, but it's exactly the same as this side, so you don't really need to see it. Okay, so next fitment, and probably the last one for today, because we're losing the light, so we may have to come back and do the lights, but um, we're gonna do the hugger. So this hugger's got um, rubber uh, grommets in here, and then we get supplied with these threaded um, uh, bushes, and basically they just fit in there like so. So hopefully you can see that just here. and another one in the back here and another one in there so hopefully you can see now that we've got one two three threaded bushes in here obviously the hug is going to go this way round on the bike so it's going to sit hopefully like so and the bracket we're believing at the moment fits on here and on here we do have separate bolts again for that but we're thinking that's what they do so what we've now got is the metal bracket very strong metal bracket I've got to say it's uh, it's pretty well made and then those line up with the holes here and the threaded pieces and then we get some short looks like probably five mil hexagon bolts and those will simply is it five four mil key four mil I'm being four told Okay, so there it is um, with the three bolts in place. And if we look at the underside, there are the three bushes with the threaded bushes with the thing going through. I've got to say, this feels perfectly adequate. Um, and I don't know what price I mentioned at the beginning, you'll remember it, I'm sure. But certainly when you compare it with something like a £200 Limburger one, um, I'm not quite sure what the difference is apart from one claims to be... Um, carbon fiber style anyway we'll take the bolts out from the swinging arm and you'll see us next time when we come to actually fit this into place okay so we're now gonna loosen the bolt here that holds the caliper on and the bolt here that's holding the swinging arm on before we remove this bolt we're just going to stick something underneath the bottom of the wheel because if we don't stick something underneath the bottom of the wheel the wheel may drop um, when we release this radial arm So you'll see here with the bolt removed, the radial arm has popped up. And if we hadn't have chopped the tire up at the bottom, then the whole lot would have dropped. We know that hasn't dropped. So all we've got to do now is bring the radial arm down to fit over the top of the swinging arm. Okay, so we've now got the hugger in place, as you can see, but not bolted up yet. It's important that you make sure that this arm goes behind the brake here. And this one comes in front of the radial arm that sits just here. So the brake pipes and everything else is back in its original clamps and underneath. So we're now gonna tighten this one up, which I think is probably an eight mil hex, and this one, which is a six mil hex. And we'll give you the torque readings in a minute when we've got them done up. So again, we'll speed this up so you don't have to watch the pain of it. before Sean does this up there's a bush just here that slots in and we've just put a little bit of copper grease on that although it does run in a phosphorus bronze bush so to a degree it's self lubricating so we're um, just going to talk the rear one up the rear one is at 24 newton meters please check it yourself we just know that on this bike this particular one is 24 and then we're going to talk this one up here which is torqued to 56 newton meters And there we go. So 56, 24 Newton meters tightened up. 
brake pipe running in between so make sure that there's nothing snagging there which it isn't it's still in its original clip here which is good these are all still clipped here and with the hammers out from under the wheel the wheel spins quite happily and the hugger is very nicely fitted Okay, so there we go. Hope you found that interesting and it does go to show that you don't necessarily have to spend premium aftermarket prices on accessories for them to work and to fit the machine and to perform. Time will obviously tell, but certainly when I look down the list of the six items that we fitted, the only one that probably was worth the money that was paid for it was the LED lights. They certainly were just, you know, a wiring loom and a switch and we just connected them to the battery. So you flick them on, you flick them off, even when the, the bike is off, you can actually turn them, turn them on. Um, we could wire them into a switched circuit, that wouldn't be too difficult, so that they came on with the lights. But obviously the Denali one is plumbed into the CAN bus system via the CAN smart unit, um, and that makes everything integrated. You use your existing switches and everything else, but you pays your money. Uh, running down the other accessories, and they were all perfectly adequate and much the same as what has been fitted, but certainly the Perspex light cover was very, very good. Nice little touch to have the R1250GS etched on it as well, made in the UK. The fender extender, to all intents and purposes, was exactly the same as the one that I fitted from uh, Machine Art, and honestly, you couldn't really tell the difference. Significant saving in money. The handlebar risers were very, very well made, lacked instructions as an awful lot of this product does. In fact, doesn't have any instructions pretty much, but once you actually knew how they fitted, they were very, very good indeed. The bung set, I believe is a bung set. I don't have a bung set, but I presume, you know, there isn't much to be said in that really. The hugger was an incredibly good product. And actually I think that's probably of all of them, the product that I would be considering uh, to put onto my, my bike as well. So when you look at the overall savings, the total cost from eBay £145.91. p. If you bought the accessories that I put throughout the video, the premium accessories, they'd be £632.95, p. so quite a saving. Anyhow, if you've liked the video, it'd be great if you could give it a thumbs up. I'm really interested in the comments below. If you've got any accessories that you buy, where you buy them from, so that you know other people can pick up ideas about where they might get some of this stuff as well. And obviously it'd be great too, if you like this type of video, that you subscribe to the channel, hit the subscribe button, don't forget to hit the notification bell, and also check in your settings to make sure that you have your settings set up for all videos to notify you when they come out because I don't think that's a standard setting certainly on the phone. Anyway, enjoyed making it. Hope you've enjoyed watching it. We'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.